Have you been watching the Weather Channel and hearing these terms high pressure and low pressure and wondering what in the world does that mean and what kind of weather should I expect? Well, hang out with me for just a couple minutes and I'm going to show you a really cool and simple illustration that'll help you know what high and low pressure is and what kind of weather to expect. Now to make things really obvious, we're going to create a high pressure and a low pressure system in a fish tank. Since water and air are both fluids, that's things with molecules that can flow around, they kind of act in similar ways. So for today's demonstration, we're going to imagine that the water is actually the atmosphere. Now, how can I create a high pressure region in my fish tank? Well, I'll do this by creating an area where the fluid is more dense. How do I do that? I'm going to add ice to just one side of the fish tank. The molecules around that ice will cool down, move closer together, and fall. And this falling air creates what we call high pressure. A weather station here at Cruella's location would be registering high pressure. Now what about low pressure? Well, to do that, I'm kind of gonna do the opposite. I've got this rock here that I've heated up by boiling in a pot of hot water. When I lower it into the tank, it will begin to heat up the fluid molecules. And as they heat up, they will spread out, making them less dense, and therefore they will rise. And that is low pressure. <laughs> A weather station over here by Goofy would be registering low pressure as the rising air is lifting off of the location. Think I'm just making all of this up? Well, guess what? It's already happening in this tank. All I have to do is add a little food coloring so you can see it in action. Do you see that cooler, denser air falling down on Cruella? It's pushing down on her, that's high pressure. Meanwhile, on the other side, that warmer, less dense, rising air is lifting off of Goofy, creating low pressure. Now don't get confused into thinking that high pressure regions can only happen when it's really cold. The air just has to be a little bit cooler than the air around it. So that could be 90 degree air if the air around it is 100. Now what kind of weather systems would high pressure and low pressure tend to bring? Let's use our model and a little bit of what we know about air temperature and how that affects how much moisture the air can hold to figure this out. Let's start out over on the low pressure side this time. That warmer air is able to hold more moisture, more water vapor. But as it rises in the atmosphere, it gets colder and colder, and it can no longer hold on to all of its moisture. This is why we often get condensation, think cloud formation, and precipitation, that's rain, in low pressure areas. Meanwhile, over on the high pressure side, we have cooler air that's often drier, falling towards the earth. This tends to create drier, more clear and sunny types of weather. One easy way to remember it, high happy, low lousy. So there you have it. You're a high and low pressure pro. Have a great day and as always, stay curious, my friends. <laughs>